I don't think Oxenfree got the praise it should have when it got published back in January of 2016, because this game is honestly really unique. It's a game that, for the first time, for me at least, made a game about teenagers having to solve their way out of a horrifying situation believable. Saying those words sounds like music to my ears, because there have been so many games about teenagers trying to figure out how to deal with supernatural forces, and somehow they all have the capability to solve the issue. And I do mean solve in a literal sense, because really, Oxen Free is just a complex puzzle that never ends until the right puzzle piece is found but that piece is completely out of reach because the player is not given enough information on how to solve the puzzle. You're at a massive disadvantage. Something games that deal with the supernatural should make the player feel, and you do feel this, throughout the story you're given more and more hints on how to solve the puzzle, but when you think you're actually solved it, you're back at square one. So the game begins on a boat. You hear someone talking as the title screen fades away. His name is Ren. He's an easily excitable, sandy blonde haired teen. He's also your best friend. You can walk around the boat and interact with things, but they're not very important. Right next to you is a guy named Jonas. He's your new stepbrother, and you just met him today. Jonas will be your side for roughly 80% of the game. Get used to him. And finally, you, the blue haired girl with the red jacket. You're Alex, and you've been invited by Ren to Edwards Island, a tourist hotspot right by your hometown of Camina, Oregon. You don't know much about this place's history, and neither do we. You arrive shortly after, and head out, up towards an out-of-bounds beach. You meet two other people along the way. Nona and Clarissa. They're best friends. Clarissa and you know each other. She doesn't seem to like you. In fact, she doesn't seem to really acknowledge your presence, either. Nona is a new face, and Ren has a crush on her. You all head down to the beach towards the fire pit Nona had just made. Ren suggests a little game of truth or dare, and this is the first time the game really makes you think on how you'll speak to the characters. Let me pause here. So throughout the video, you haven't really heard me talking about the dialogue choices in the game. It's a pivotal part of the game, and not mentioning it would be crazy, because this game is one of the few games where you actually have choices and they actually matter, right? Well, not exactly. Let me jump to the end of the game, and from here on out, there will be massive spoilers for a few particular endings that you might not want to see in this video, so you have been warned. You're on the ferry ride home with your friends and maybe Clarissa, and the game ends with a picture, just like how it began. Ren takes a picture of the group with his phone. The picture pops up and Alex talks about what everyone's up to after the events that transpired at Edwards Island. The ending is dependent on your choices through the game how you respond and react to most of the characters and events. If you were a dick to Ren throughout the entire game, he'll no longer want to be your friend and move to California. If you saved Clarissa and mended your relationship with her, you and her will be on good terms, only speaking occasionally. Then it finally zooms in on Alex, and you're given three final choices. These choices are always the same, and they don't matter, because right after your choices, the screen glitches, and the game starts right off to where it began. There is no end to this game. Every single time you come up to Alex's three final choices in the game, the screen glitches and Alex talks to the player as though time has just rewound itself, and you're back on the ferry, starting your game all over again. The only exception to this being the ending where Ren, Jonas, and Alex never go to the island. But in order for this to happen, you must have already been in the game at least once, or else you can't get this ending. This is the only time where your choices actually impact the end of the game. But in order for this ending to even work, Alex must have already gone to the island. You see where I'm getting at? Here, let me explain it like this. Let's call the ending where Alex never goes to the island, um, ending no-go. Ending no-go is impossible to get on your first run, because you need to do something pretty specific in order to achieve no-go. You have to warn yourself to not go to the island. I know, pretty crazy, right? It is entirely possible that the no-go Alex is actually free from the game's loop, but in order for this to happen, another Alex has to warn her. This part of the game tampers with multiple timelines, something I'm not entirely sure with, but in layman's terms, no-go Alex, from the timeline in which no-go occurs, or Alex never goes to the island, is warned by Looper Alex, the Alex from a never-ending looping timeline to not go to Edward's island. What I'm getting at is that this game's endings aren't actual solutions to the game's puzzle, that puzzle being how to get off the island without the day looping indefinitely. We currently don't have an answer to this. For every Alex that never goes to the island, there's another Alex that's doomed to repeat the same day over and over again. Always going to the island, always having to deal with the sunken, and destined to either ruin or mend relationship with people she's just been trapped with. Maybe we'll find a solution to this problem one day, but not having a solution to a game like this doesn't make it bad. 
From a story's perspective, it makes actual sense, really. No one is going to figure out how to combat against a supernatural hive mind. There's no way to figure out how it'll act in a situation like this. Also, these are young teenagers. Teenagers that are full of hormones and emotions. Teenagers that have problems with each other. And the sunken having the ability to manipulate this doesn't help their case either, does it? The game works for what it is. It's one of the few exceptions of the teens in a supernatural environment trope to actually work. And that's why I wanted to personally recommend this game to anyone who's interested in a supernatural linear game filled with decent dialogue, good actors, and a great, somewhat convoluted story. Thank you for watching this video. I had a great time recording this gameplay. It's a really fun game to play. This has really been a long time in the making. Sorry about that. School's been really shitty, but okay, so let's get into this video.